Hey guys, it's Scott's Comic, Brad Stein. I know you've been waiting all week for the next episode. I don't blame you. I'd wait for it too, but I already know what's coming. Here's the question of the week, and I need you to participate by writing down in the thread below so we can all talk to each other. The question is simple. Did you grow up reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? And if so, or if not, do you think it's important that it's continued today? Write your comments below. Heck, I might even show up. I got nothing to lose. Come on in. Okay, so it's time for Americans to do some introspection. When I grew up and went to elementary school, we started our day, every day, reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. The pledge, for those of you that don't know it, and if you don't, you've Proven my point goes like this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Now, what is allegiance? Merriam Webster defined it, and lest we forget, Merriam not only gave her allegiance to the flag, she even sewed them herself and sewed them back table for further revenue. But the definition goes like this allegiance, the loyalty of a citizen to his or her government or of a subject to his or her sovereign, loyalty or devotion to some person, group, cause, or the like. Notice the word sovereign. Do you know what that means? If not, once again, I will do your homework for you. Sovereign means possessing supreme or ultimate power. In modern democracies, the people's will is, in theory, sovereign. In a previous episode, I taught you the absolute necessity in defining your terms in regards to a word or phrase when in communication with others. And if you don't, rest assured, you will not be in communication at all. If you define a word differently and aren't aware of it, you will literally be speaking the same language to each other, but interpreting it from your perspective and thus very likely having no idea what the other person is saying. You will become very frustrated, and as we have seen so often in America, you run the risk of getting angry and attacking and maligning the other based on your misperception. So, the first line of the pledge is a commitment to respecting and committing your support and defense of your country, which includes its traditions, principles, and its commitment to its creed. Doesn't mean you have to agree with everything. Everything that it perpetuates, and, and truly, when it comes to policies, that would be impossible depending on the president and Congress in regards to what they are attempting to implement. If they decide to move forward with a more socialist agenda, I am going to vehemently disagree for the very reason that the country that has achieved so much and became the greatest superpower in human history did so by following free market principles and limited government intervention. So over time, there were presidents that began to implement socialist policies that literally began the unraveling of the American tradition. That was individuals left to themselves to seek to achieve whatever they could dream and were willing to risk through their hard work and determination. So, back to the pledge. And to the republic for which it stands. What is republic? And again, if you don't know, then you are a victim of an erasure of your heritage and are a victim of either poor education based on incompetence or worse yet, of an agenda to obfuscate the necessary foundations you need in order to be able to grasp a true understanding of what America was founded on. It is literally why when Ben Franklin was asked after the Constitutional Convention what they had created, his answer has echoed throughout history. He said, a republic, if you can keep it. This rewriting American history is an agenda by Americans with a completely different view of what America is and could be. This is why it should be mandatory that every American child from elementary school through university be taught the original intent of what the founders envisioned when this nation was formed, because without the original rule book, we will get off track as people's personal desires, as well as their thirst for power, will take precedence and become the driving force of their policies. That's why we need a constitution in the first place, so that it would be permanently established what the individual rights of Americans would be and what would be expected of the role of government in moving this nation forward. Okay, next phrase. One nation under God. 
you haven't noticed, leftists fear one nation as much as anything because one nation means we have a collective memory of who we are as Americans and what is expected of us contributors to this nation's future. It's why we have heard so much from the left about multiculturalism. Multiculturalism is designed to degrade the amazing uniqueness of America in regards to its place in history in creating more freedom for more unique nationalities and genders than any country before or after. Multiculturalism, which I discussed in a previous episode, acts as though all cultures are equally just, valuable, and honorable, so as not to hurt the feelings of those who have chosen to abandon their amazing culture to join ours. If you believe that, by the way, then you have to give as much honor to Aztec culture, which sacrificed hundreds of thousands of their enemies by cutting out the still beating hearts of their victim to appease the gods as equal to the Declaration of Independence that made it clear God created all of us equal, thus cutting out our heart would be considered a no-no. Nazi culture would have to be honored equally with ours or communist countries that caused more human rights violations and murder in the 20th century than any other political or religious philosophy in human history combined. No, America is e pluribus unum on purpose out of many Yes, but one. A house divided falls, folks, under God. Wait, why would the pledge indicate a theocracy of some kind? It doesn't, of course. Under God referenced, again, the Declaration of Independence. Reminder that the Creator gave us our rights, and only He can remove them. Any other government or entity that tries to do so will be exposed as a despot. And he needs to be stopped by any means necessary. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Indivisible, indivisible means unable to be divided or separated. Yet this country is more divided and separated than perhaps at any time in its history. Why? Because the evil, and it is, of leftism, Marxism, and socialism trying to replace our free market society where you earn whatever you are willing to work for and are compensated for whatever you might accomplish or not. Leftism hates accomplishment of the individual because it exposes one of the many undergirding lies of the left, that humans are born with the same intrinsic value and dignity, a Christian concept, by the way, but not with the same fortitude, work ethic, or skill set. The reason the left perpetuates the victimhood status of certain groups is to train them to receive government funds for not working or contributing to society in order for the left to have an endless supply of voters who will never be free from the change they have shackled upon themselves and yet given permission to complain so as to never have to fully accept the responsibility that their successive generations have taught them. With liberty and justice for all, the definition of liberty is so important, I'm going to describe the entire group of phrases in the dictionary to help you fully feel its impact. Liberty, the power to do as one pleases. Freedom from physical restraint. Freedom from arbitrary or despotic control. The positive enjoyment of various social, political, or economic rights and privileges. The power of choice. If you don't have that, you have already been stolen from by your government leaders or local representatives. And yet, it was that form of liberty that caused the founding generation to pick up arms against its country of origin. That is why militia, the very idea of it, is crucial to defend liberty. And lastly, justice for all. Justice simply is fairness, moral rightness a scheme or system of law in which every person receives his or her due from the system, including all rights, both natural and legal. Has America always treated its citizens equally? Absolutely not. Has America had cultural conventions like slavery that every culture did throughout history? Yep. Was that the concept counter to what the Declaration stated as well as the Constitution guarantees, oh yeah. Did half a million Americans die in the Civil War to try and right that wrong? They sure did. Is slavery over in America? Of course it is. 
Is slavery over in India, China, Pakistan, and a host of other countries right now in the year 2021? No. No, it's not. Should those countries be held accountable for this human rights abuse happening as we speak? Of course. But we as Americans shouldn't do anything to assist. I mean, after all, we don't want to be accused of colonialism or anything, right? See, remember the left believes that all cultures are equal. Hey, leftist, hypocrisy much? So in conclusion, there is a reason we used to recite the Pledge of Allegiance and also a reason why the leftists discarded it. Nothing like a simple American tradition to expose the evil and control that the left has implemented into this nation that has gotten so numb to it, even the accusations by some Americans that the greatest voter fraud in our history can go unnoticed or justified. I mean, that's something people wanted to discuss, and they weren't even allowed to. Is that free? That's all we're asking. Can we be free to explore concepts we think need to be explored? Hey, America. You want your liberty back? Now you understand why the Second Amendment was created. Dangerous, huh? And now I ask you, now what? This is God's comic, Brad Stein. Loving liberty and justice for all. Loving God first, country second. PC free is liberty. Join the movement. Hey, if you just finished watching my latest rant, you are one of the mighty 1,000. What is that? That is the first 1,000 people who have seen what I'm doing, this unorthodox, comedic, but hopefully insightful way to engage the culture about Jesus, about logic, philosophy, reason, and returning to America's values. That's what this entire ministry is about. That's what the PC Free Movement is. So I need your help. Yeah, you're already one of the 1,000, and God bless you for that. But I need more. We're not at 1,000 yet, and those first 1,000 will forever be the original launchers of this unique ministry and sort of mission to America. So please, share this. Try to bring friends in. And matter of fact, if you can show me that you get 10 friends, if you can prove it somehow or another, I might even send you a free gift. I just want to grow this into something that can be helpful, inspiring to people from all walks of life. And who knows, it might go worldwide. I also hope to see you live as I'm out there in comedy clubs and churches, spreading the good news in this really odd way. Hey, unfortunately, this is what God got stuck with in this season in America. Join us. Be part of the 1,000. You already are. Bring in some other warriors. Let's fight.